Today we're going to shift gears a little bit and we're going to talk about changing oil in your motorcycle. And in particular for me, I'm going to have a track day this Sunday. And so what be better way to prepare for the track than to put some nice fresh oil in your motorcycle. And before we start, we're going to gather up all our tools and make sure we got everything we need to start this oil change. Uh, obviously the first thing we need is oil. And what I have here is Repsol Racing Oil. Um, this is my preferred oil. It is the highest rated you can get, API SJ. It's a fully synthetic 10W50. That's what I'll be putting in my motorcycle. Um, you also need a filter, an oil filter. And I'm using a K&N, uh, CAN 204 for my 600RR here. And you'll see later on why this oil filter is preferred among many people and how it can really, really reduce the amount of time you need to change your oil. Okay. Next couple of tools you need is a socket wrench with uh, probably most likely a 17 mil and uh, whatever will fit your oil drain bolt. Okay, so depending on your manufacturer, that size differs. But you'll need the 17 mil for the oil filter, and you also need an extension uh, for the socket. A couple of tools that I won't be using that you might need are some oil filter wrenches. I have a couple of variants here, this type, uh, which kind of just goes over the outside of the oil filter, and a band type, which uses just a ton of friction uh, to uh, wrench the filter off. But I won't be using these, but these are two different types that are available commercially and you can use them. And finally, what I'll need is an oil pan. This is so I can collect all the oil that'll be draining out of my motorcycle. One last tool that I have here that's pretty important uh, is a rear stand. And a lot of people skip this and do the service on the kickstand, but a rear stand really aids you in doing many different types of services like changing out your rear tire, doing your sprockets, and doing your oil. So let's take a look at the one I got here. What I'm using is a pit bull rear stand, and you can see it's gotten quite a bit of wear, but it's lasted me a long time and it's given me uh, problem-free use for the past couple of years. The way I have it mounted on my motorcycle is I'm using a spool, and spools are definitely preferred, much more stable, and uh, are not prone to sliding on the swing arm. And having used this, you can keep your bike net nice and level, and it'll definitely aid you in uh, draining your oil. Now before I start my oil change, I'm going to describe a little bit about the type of bike I'm working on. And my bike here is a 2004 Honda CBR 600 RR. And what's great about this bike is that you can do an oil change on this bike without taking off the lower fairings. Now this is not typical of many motorcycles, so make sure for you guys at home to double check. Uh, if you are not having one of these bikes or possibly one of the newer Kawasaki's, uh, you will have to take your bodywork off before you start your oil change. Now what you're looking at here is the oil drain bolt on your motorcycle. And most of the time, it's located at the lowest most portion of your oil pan where the oil can drain out. And I'll point it out to you right now, it's this guy right here. And what you typically want to do is before you loosen the oil drain bolt is to make sure you have a warm engine. Uh, not too hot, but just warm. That way the oil has circulated a little bit and the, it becomes more viscous and it will flow out a lot better. So you want to make sure you have a warm engine before you begin. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and loosen the oil drain bolt. Now with the oil fully drained, it's going to drip a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and clean off the surface of the uh, oil pan and go ahead and put the bolt back in. Now go ahead and tighten your oil drain bolt up to spec and depending on your manufacturer, uh, the amount of foot pounds that you need will vary but be very careful not to over tighten. What I got here is my oil filter and we're going to be replacing this next and I wanted to show you my new one uh, to demonstrate why it is that the k and uh, oil filter is preferred. Now if you zoom in real close to the top of this oil filter here, you're going to notice what looks like a hex head. And this guy a, fits a 17 mil socket wrench. You'll also notice on the side of it, it is also pre-drilled for safety wiring. Very few oil filters have this and almost all racers will want something to this degree on their oil filter. And this filter is what I already have on my bike 
and I'm going to show you how I can remove my oil filter without uh, having to take off my bodywork. It's a little bit dark and there's not quite enough light, but I'm going to show you as I put my socket wrench through here how I can reach between the headers and get to the top of my oil filter. And once you're there, you can go ahead and start loosening it up. Now make sure your oil pan's in place as you loosen your filter so they can catch any residual oil that'll be coming out. What I have here is my old oil filter and it slips out really easily just between the header pipes. So if you kind of reach it between there, you can grab this guy and pull it out. Now with my new filter, I'm going to apply a, a small film of oil around the O-ring. So I'm just going to go ahead and dip my finger in the oil and uh, go ahead and apply this oil right on the ring just like this. And this will help me provide a really nice seal when I put the filter back on. Gone ahead and put the oil filter back on, uh, kind of going through the reverse method, which is to put the oil filter through the headers underneath and then to thread it onto the oil filter bolt. Now I went ahead and hand tightened the oil filter and as soon as I felt resistance, I will start using my 17mm socket to put it on. Now usually all you need is about a revolution to a revolution and a quarter and that should be sufficient. And as always, uh, refer to your manual to see what the torque specs are for your oil filter. Definitely be careful not to over tighten the oil filter or it may damage the o-ring. What you're looking at here is the oil level window usually located on the lower portion of your engine case. Uh, you're going to use this to determine the level of oil that you're, as you're filling the uh, motor with oil. And on some bikes, like old Yamahas, you'll have a dipstick instead. So um, you'll want to pay attention to whether you have a window or a dipstick. And now with my filter on nice and tight, I'm going to go ahead and start filling with oil. As I'm filling the oil up here, you should keep paying attention to your oil level window. And as you can see, uh, there's already starting to fill up uh, just past the bottom line there. And most motorcycle engines take anywhere from three to four liters of oil. And you'll have to cons uh, consult your manual to determine how much you'll need. And knowing that amount and, and combining that with viewing your vin window will give you a really good gauge on how much oil you really need to add to your motorcycle. I'm going to go ahead and fill it up till it's a little more than half full and then we're going to fire up the bike to get the oil circulating through the engine here. Now be sure to tighten up your uh, oil fill cap before you start up your motorcycle and the reason why we're going to start up the motorcycle is we're going to let the oil flow through the engine and get a nice good coating around all the engine components and you'll notice that as soon as you start it up and turn it off, you're going to look at the window and there'll be no more oil in that level. And in any case, you need to put a little more oil and after that we'll be, we'll be finished. We're going to start up the motor and let it run for just about 10 seconds to let the oil flow through the motor and get a nice coating around all the engine components. Usually the oil level on the window will have been very, very low and you'll need to start filling more oil to get it back up to a mid-level point. So at this point, I've already filled up some oil and I'm gonna to continue to do it until I can get right up to about the middle or a little just, just past the middle of the window there. My oil change is complete. Hopefully uh, you've learned a lot from how uh, to do an oil change. Now again, uh, every bike is a little bit different. Always consult your manual before you do uh, technical work on your motorcycle. Uh, this is definitely, if you do not have the right tools or if this is your first time, this is not the video to train you how to do an oil change. This is to demonstrate how a typical oil changes perform and with proper supervision, you will be able to do your own and it will become a very uh, cost effective way of maintaining your motorcycle. So again, my name is Jay with BuyMoto.com and your number one source for motorcycle parts and accessories. Have a good day.